Welcome, everyone, to the Villanova Football Signing Day Show. I'm Steve Pannone. I'm joined by head coach Mark Ferrante. Coach, recruiting the lifeblood of any program. Uh, your staff's been out on the road. You've had camp in the summer. You brought some quality kids in. Let's talk about the whole process. It's Now it's high school. It's grad transfers. It's transfer portal. Talk a little bit about what goes into this process. Yeah, it goes in waves, Steve. It starts, you know, sometimes sophomore year, but we don't do a lot of that. Uh, junior year, you're looking at high school film. We're on the road in the springtime. We're... we're primarily focused on the high school guys there. And as you said, then we try to get as many guys that we have interest in coming to summer camps. June and July is the big camp month. So it kind of cycles around. You have your high school recruitment phase, like I said, spring and then into the summer. And, and then you get into your fall season and recruiting. You know, Steve, you've heard this before. <laughs> recruiting, you got to do a little bit every day or you start looking bad, you know. So it's a year-round process. And then when you get to the end of your fall season, you know, we will get involved with some grad transfers. Obviously can't talk about any of them in this uh, conversation here but um, you know you, you, you talk to your current roster you're always recruiting your guys on your roster to try to see you know make sure they're going to stay with you and so on and and then you have a couple voids at the end of the season potentially to fill and you know we, we have looked at the grad transfer portal a little bit to see if we can fill a couple vacancies that come late so you kind of that's kind of where you head into late November December and once we get through this early signing period we're going to have a number of high school guys sign with us you know, to, today and then after that, we're hoping to, uh, you know, get out there and get on the road and maybe fill in a couple more spots b between now and the February signing. Because you've been at this a long time, been doing this a long time, but the, the recent thing is has been this added COVID year now. So you have some fifth-year players, some six-year players. Uh, some kids decide to use that COVID year. Some kids decide not to. So uh, and actually another aspect that has to go into trying to fill out a roster. Yeah, I've been talking to a couple coaches. I was actually on the phone yesterday with Coach Fitzgerald out at Northwestern, and he was saying the same thing. The hardest thing to do right now is uh, roster management. Managing your roster, you know, you, you have guys that can, can come back for the extra years. You have some guys that are opting to go and start their careers and start the next chapter of their life, even though they may have a year of eligibility remaining. And, uh, yeah, it's hard. you got 60 year guys. You know, every now and then you get a guy with a waiver to get a seventh fall season. So, you know, that's one of the hardest things to, to manage right now, just trying to figure out, okay, who's coming back, who has eligibility to come back, and, you know, uh, figure out how many high school guys you really have room for. And we're going to talk to your staff individually about the guys that you brought in, but you're bringing 11 players right now, six on offense, five on defense. So a breakdown on both sides of the ball. I guess if you can give me an overall thought process on, on the group as a whole. Yeah, we're pretty balanced, as you said, on, on offense and defense. Uh, all of our specialists are coming back next year, so we really don't have any guys from the special teams perspective as of right now. But as far as the uh, guys in positions, and we'll talk to our guys here about it to get a little more uh, personal information about each guy, but much different than last year. Uh, five of the guys, five of the 11 guys that are signing our offensive and defensive linemen, where last year we only signed one defensive lineman. Uh, you know, so much uh, heavier emphasis on the line of scrimmage as opposed to the skill positions this season. And that's just, just the way the roster breaks down. You have guys graduating and moving on at those positions, so there's more of a need, and that's where you use your scholarships. Yeah, you got to just very, uh, you know, look at the roster and see where the voids are happening, where the guys are graduating, who's exhausting their eligibility, and so on. So it, it's a moving target for sure, and it's something that I think our staff being out on the road starting last spring, like I mentioned with the high school guys, and then getting on the road these last two weeks in December, building into today and, and looking forward to today and uh, assigning these 11 guys. They've done a great job, and uh, you know we got a pretty good area represented as far as uh, multiple states. Coach, we're going to sit down with your assistant coaches at this point. We'll come bring you back on afterwards, and we'll break down the injury. But first up will be Coach Flesher and the running backs. We're joined by running backs, Coach Josh Flesher. And, and Coach, you guys pick up two running backs in this group. Let's talk a little bit first about Isaiah Raglan. One of the things that we really emphasized when looking at running backs this year were program changers. You know, guys that can come in, not necessarily freshman year, but as they go, really define the culture, you know, what we want to do. You know, it's really, as we talked about before, that started with Coach Jones, whole ground and pound era, you know, that they've had. So, you know, when you're looking at Isaiah, I mean, he's definitely, when you think of those two parts, he's the ground, man. You know, he's the guy that he's, his entire career been a hard-nosed runner, so we're really excited to have him. 5'9", 190 pounds out of Centerville High School in Virginia. 68 career touchdowns. He was a, a first-team All-Met player in the D.C. region, first-team All-Region. 
Northern Virginia Player of the Year and the Virginia Gatorade Player of the Year nominee. So you got a, you got a quality athlete here. Yeah, actually now two time on Met. Uh, those awards just came out uh, yesterday, um, but he he's a great guy. You know, he's a good character guy, high character, and he's the kind of person that I think is really going to fit in the room. I mean, we're lucky to have Jalen back. We're lucky to have obviously TD and D Will, but this next class coming in, I, I feel like we're building pieces to help you know, replenish what we've lost. And, in, and joining Isaiah in that class is going to be Jabril Mace, a running back out of Mainland Regional High School in New Jersey, the South Jersey Player of the Year in 2022, 58 career rushing touchdowns. He's run for over 3,800 3, yards in his career, second in school history, first team all South Jersey, all Atlantic City running back three times and a two-time All-State player, so another quality athlete. He's a guy, I mean, when you watch his change of direction, like right there, I mean, he puts his foot in the ground. I mean, it's hard to tackle this guy. I mean, he's a guy that, again, I'm excited with some of the things we can do. You know, if we're able to stay healthy, you know, I think these two guys, the pieces and the dynamic aspects they bring to the program will really help us. Coach, we appreciate you taking some time to join us today, and we look forward to talking about the wide receiver position next. We're joined by wide receiver coach Nate Pagan. And, Coach, you have an experienced group, but you're going to bring in one additional player, Kenyon Miles from St. Anthony's in Long Island. Uh, 32 catches, 473 receiving yards, five touchdowns this season as well. Averages almost 15 yards per catch. Uh, New York State champion, so it comes from a winning culture. And also a long jump champion, so a really good athlete. Tell us a little bit about Kenyon. Yeah, um, great thing about Kenyon is we saw Kenyon in camp two or three times this past summer. And then I was able to see Kenyon again in the springtime. So Kenyon showed kind of that explosiveness and that versatility as a player. Um, really liked the way he catches the football. He does it very naturally. And then being able to see him flip around onto the defensive side this past season, played a little bit of safety um, for their state championship team and watching his physicality come downhill and make plays in the run game and things like that. I love seeing that from a, from a coaching perspective, coaching the wide out position. So really excited about him. Again, love the versatility, and I think he can add um, a little bit of a, a dynamic playmaker in the room. And he comes in with good size, six foot two, about 175 pounds. I'm sure who you guys will lock him in the weight room and bulk him up a little bit more. But he joins an experienced group in your room. Uh, he'll have his chance to kind of learn from some older guys and, and find his way here. Yeah, definitely. He's, you know, we, we bring back a lot of guys. Obviously, you have guys like Jaron Hayek, uh, Ray Jean Pringle, and then you know you, you bring back some of the young guys that played a little bit late in the season and Daniel Lopes and Ethan Carr and, and um, Nathaniel Hill. So really think he can continue to learn from a lot of those guys and uh, grow as a, as a young player and then hopefully be able to help us a little bit, um, especially on special teams, um, showing his versatility. So really excited about him. And um, like you said, he's 6'2". He's about 175, 180. Um, if you saw his dad, his dad is about 6'5", 300-something pounds. So <laughs> hopefully he can put on a little bit of weight uh, with his frame as well. Coach Pagan, we appreciate your time and best of luck with Kenyon Miles. Thank you. Appreciate it. We're joined by tight end coach Lachlan Klein. And, and coach, you talk about you know this Villanova, we recruit all over the country. You guys didn't go real far to find yourself a tight end. Upper Marion High School and Nolan Clayton, 6'5", 240 pounds from Upper Marion. First team all-conference. Uh, also punters who show some versatility athletically. Uh, second team all-conference on the defensive line as well. So this guy played both, ends, both ways in high school. Talk a little bit about Nolan. Yeah, so you mentioned that he played both ways. So one thing we're going to get out of Nolan is really a high – IQ guy, high football IQ. He's played quarterback in the past, played tight end mostly this year, and then stuck his hand in the ground and played nose tackle, defensive end. So he's really passionate about football. So, you know, you watch his high school highlights, and he's pretty much playing all over the field, wide receiver type position, true tight end, and you'll see him play some wildcat snaps as well. So we're excited for Nolan because we think he's going to be a high key, IQ guy that's going to be able to help us out pretty much immediately. Right, but we're also uh, expecting him to be able to grow a little bit more, right? Put some more weight on and, and become a true tight end because he has played some quarterback in the past. And, and you talk about your room, you, you have a couple guys moving on. Jack Gilroy, uh, Charlie Gilroy, who played a lot of snaps for you. Jack Stanton will be moving on as well. So there are some opportunities in your room. Talk a little bit about some of the other guys in your room. Yeah, so we'll have uh, Antonio Johnson and Mitch Bothwell uh, c coming back. And those two guys are going to be the kind of older guys in the room now. And we also have uh, James Welly as well. So uh, all four of these guys now with adding Nolan, um, we'll be excited to have all three of these four with well, Nolan, yeah. excuse me, um, guys being able to contribute. And we're also planning on, you know, potentially looking into that grad transfer area like we, Coach Ferrante yeah. talked about earlier. Michael, we appreciate your time. Best of luck with Nolan. Thank you.
We're joined by offensive line coach Sean Devine. And, Coach, you guys bring in two prospects up front to help you guys protect your quarterback, Chris McCullers, six foot three, 280 pounds out of Woodgrove High School in Virginia, and Kyle Fay, 6'6", 285 out of Cranford High School in New Jersey. Talk a little bit about Chris first, what you saw and what you liked about him. Sure, Steve. Uh, Chris is, is one of those young men that we like to define as a diamond in the rough. Started back in the summertime, the very beginning of the summertime on the Memorial Day trip up to South Philly, where we saw this, this young man participate in a competitive camp environment and right from the get-go just dominated with, with speed, power, agility, toughness, grit, all those things that you like to see for an offensive guard or an interior offensive lineman. And as, we, the, as the process lengthened with Chris getting him here on campus, Coach Fletcher doing a terrific job recruiting him, he's our type of guy. You know, terrific family, wonderful human being, and just a, a vicious football player, which those are the type of guys we love, mm -hmm. guys that, that go out there and play their tails off between the lines. But when they step off, step off the field, they're a pleasure to have as a part of our family. Yeah. And obviously a lot of accolades this year, first team all region, first team all district, first team all district offense and defensive linemen. So the, once again, that versatility keeps showing up with your recruiting class. Uh, in all state offensive line in a 5A category in Virginia, and a five sport varsity letter winner. So he played football, basketball, baseball, wrestled, and swam. You don't see a lot of swimmers in football too often, but this kid's obviously a good athlete. Right, he's diverse. <laughs> he's got a lot of a lot of skills in his tool bag, and and uh, we can't wait to get him here and, and develop him along with his future teammates. And, and that, one of those future teammates is Kyle Fay at six six two eighty five. Does he project more on the outside? I guess where you see six six and two eighty five. First team all county offensive lineman. All the uh, first team all division offensive line as well ranked as a number three prospect in Union County and also an all conference basketball player, so another good athlete. Yeah, that's the one thing we really like here uh, on our on the edge on our perimeter or our length and athletic. And Kyle combines those two traits. He comes from a kind of an O line university uh, high school at Cranford High. They've sent players on to Penn State, Illinois, guys in the NFL, and, and Kyle's of that ilk. Terrific athlete, length, or excuse me, extremely long, and we're excited for his his growth once he gets here to Villanova. The sky is the limit for him. And coach, you guys have been pretty stable the last couple of years, and you, now you're going to have some turnover up front. Some guys have used up their eligibility, so there's some opportunities for some new guys to step up. Tell us a little bit about your room. Yeah, it's 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 an exciting time. I think we, we've had some terrific young men come through this program, and obviously I'm Coach Ferrani as an old line coach. He's been an awesome resource in, in terms of the evaluation process and now it's it's open competition I can't tell you how excited we are for the spring guys like Wyatt Hummel and Jaden Rowling uh, competing young players like Stefan Voltaire and, and Temi Ajiro Tutu and, and Jake Picard I mean they're, they've all had starting experience every single one of those returners but now they get a chance to gel together and coach we appreciate your time best of luck working with Chris and Kyle in the future thanks so much Steve appreciate you having me we're joined by defensive coordinator and, and defensive line coach Ross Pennypacker. And, Coach, I guess you won their seat stakes this year. You get three kids in your position. And uh, we'll start first with Capri Martin, 6'2", uh, 255 pounds out of Iona Prep in New York, an all-league defensive lineman, two-time all-state defensive lineman. Uh, you know, NS He was a player of the week up there as well and a, a first-team all-wrestling champ as well. So I know uh, you've had some guys like Garrett Zobel comes to mind in the past, the wrestling-defensive line combination. Talk a little bit about Capri. Yeah, Capri's film, I mean, it just jumped immediately. You know, you get, you get to see the type of motor he plays with, has heavy hands, good lateral quickness, you know, runs through contact when he uh, gets to the ball carriers. Really, really excited about him. As you mentioned, he's a wrestler, so I think that applies a lot to our position group, you know, being able to, you know, twerk your body and, you know, play against double teams and things like that nature. So, you know, super, super excited for, uh, for Capri, and we, we can't wait to get him here. And then uh, your, ne your next young man is Nigel McSween from Del Barton High School in New Jersey, 6'4", 240 pounds, a, a first-team all-county player, all-super conference defensive lineman as well, and a first place uh, in the discus and the shot put, so he's got some strength and athleticism as well. Yeah, I don't think Capri – or excuse me, I don't even think Nigel knows how good he can be yet. Um, you know, really, really long athlete, you know, does some amazing things on film. You get to watch him right here. You know, just how he transitions. He's long. You know, that's something that we've been missing uh, in the last couple years here. So a little bit of length at the defensive end position. So we feel like he can be a tremendous pass rusher here in the future. You know, and you just see him burst, you know. And I, I talked about Capri as well. When we turned his film on, he just popped right away. And, uh, you know, as soon as we were able to see him and, you know, get to know him a little bit, we felt he was a tremendous fit for us. 
you know, as a, as a great human being, great person. So we're super, super excited uh, about Nigel. And the third member of your class, Ivan Murray, six foot three, 265 pounds from Paulsboro High School in New Jersey, was a first team all conference defensive lineman twice, first team all conference offensive lineman. So the versatility continues to show as well. And an all South Jersey defensive lineman twice a year, and an all academic team, so an also a bright kid as well. Right, super, super bright. In fact, Ivan's actually uh, the class president over at Paulsboro. So we know we're getting a quality young man. Um, you know, playing both sides of the ball for him. You know, that, that's tough to do in, in high school because you're probably playing every snap. So he's getting contact every snap. So, you know, when you watch him here on film, he's just a rough and tumble dude. You know, really, really excited for him as well. You know, he plays hard, plays through the whistle. He's got that grit that we're looking for, you know, up front. And we're, we're really, really excited about, uh, about Ivan. Because you've had some turnover in your room in terms of eligibility being used up, guys moving on. So mm -hmm. uh, maybe an opportunity for some of these young people to make an immediate impact? Absolutely. I mean, that's that's kind of been our recruiting tactic this year. We knew that we we're going to have to fill some voids there. So, um, you know, we tell these guys come in ready to play uh, when they were here for their official visit uh, last week or two weeks ago. You know, we kind of mentioned that to them. You know, make sure you guys come in here ready to play because there's going to be a lot of opportunity for you guys. Coach, we appreciate your time. Good luck with Capri, Nigel, and Ivan. All right. Thanks, Steve. We're joined by linebackers coach Dave Reed and coach. You guys bring in Jason Hall, one one linebacker so far, a Connecticut kid out of Suffield Academy, six foot two, two hundred and fifteen pounds. He was a first team All Conference running back as well. Uh, Boston Globe All Scholastic player, ran for over eleven hundred and eighty yards, sixteen touchdowns in just five games. So obviously he's got some stats in the offense. What did you like about him on the defensive side of the ball? Yeah, it was nice because we got to identify linebackers probably in April and May as the staff, Ross, Matt, Dustin, and myself. And he was one of the guys that stood out, obviously, watching film. So I had the opportunity to run into him um, at a workout at his school, Suffield Academy, up in Connecticut. And he just did some really good things. He was good change of direction. Obviously, his running back film shows you that. Uh, on defense, he shows some explosive power, which we like to see. He's a good-sized dude. He's got some good length to him, you know, at six foot. Uh, I think his wingspan was 6'2 or 6'3, I think we measured him at. Um, but he's just an overall good ball player. I mean, you get to see him on offense a lot, um, changing direction, running through people, running around people. So good speed there, and I think he projects well as a linebacker for us in our scheme. In this season, you guys had a lot of turnover. You had a lot of young guys get an opportunity to play this year. And uh, you know, I think Jason fits in the mold of some of the guys you have. Yeah, he compares favorably. I think uh, Turner Inge, a guy this year that didn't play much, but very similar high school film. Um, we had a couple young guys step up and Shane Hartzell, Brendan Bell. Um, so I think the sky's the limit uh, for that group. And I think we'll see what he can prove, Jason, but uh, maybe get a chance to get in the mix as well. Dave, okay, we appreciate your time. Best of luck with Jason. Thank you very much. We're joined by special teams coordinator and safety coach Matt Colangelo. And coach, you guys bring in a, a defensive back in Zamir Dawu from North Brunswick High School in New Jersey. Uh, quality athlete, first team all division, all conference, all county, 60 career receptions, uh, 20 touchdowns, 113 tackles, two forced fumbles, interception. This just sounds like a quality player. Yeah, you can go on and on and on <laughs> about what Zamir does well, right? Uh, I think when we first put on his highlight tape, you see him as an offensive player, right? Catching the football, uh, very dynamic with the ball in his hands. You know, as a special teams coordinator, you see some of these return clips that gets you excited <laughs> as well. Uh, but a after watching the offensive stuff, you know, flips over to D, and he's physical, man. Um, you know, when we talk about recruiting guys in the secondary, we want guys that can play all five positions, right? Whether it's corner, a high safety, or an overhang. And I think, obviously, his, his measurables as an athlete show that he could play corner. And then you put on the tape, and you see him, you know, tackling, running downhill, and that he's got that ability to play safety. So uh, in our minds, a complete football player uh, in the secondary, no matter where he starts, uh, you know, we can move him in all five of those positions. And you mentioned in your role as special teams coordinator, you see some return stuff on film, but also looks like a guy you can use on coverage teams as well. Yeah, I think he's a 10-9 uh, in, in his track time, so he, he can run. He was part of a team that was uh, in the Nationals for the 4 by you know, uh, 100 So uh, that shows, right? The track speed shows on the tape and, and you know, combined with an, an elite football player catching the ball and, uh, you know, taking proper angles, you know, that combination of, of that – gets it done for us. And you got a veteran group returning in, in, in the defensive backfield, especially at your safety position. How do you see Zermier fitting in with your group that's coming back? He's going to get a chance to learn, right? Uh, we got, like you mentioned, a lot of guys coming back, uh, but always the opportunity to make an impact, right? Uh, you know, our guys, uh, as we go through the recruiting process, know. Uh, you've seen young guys in the past, uh, Christian Benford, Jaquan Amos have come through here that made an impact. You know, we're really excited about the veteran returning and but they'll push those guys right and that's the point we want great co uh, competitors Zamir's shown that he's willing to do so 
Matt, we appreciate your time. Best of luck working with Zamir. Thanks. Coach, you've had a chance to break down the 11 young men that you'll be bringing in next year. And some of the recurring themes are kind of two-way players, multi-sport players, quality athletes, really good students. Uh, Obviously, all things you look for in players. Yeah, no doubt. Our staff did a great job. And, you know, this year, unlike some others, we have pretty much everyone from our main recruiting footprint, you know, from New England down to Virginia is where all these guys are from. So our staff did a great job starting way back in the spring and getting live evaluations on a lot of these guys in the summer camp months, whether it was at our campus or some other campuses that we visited. And, uh, and then you got to get to know them, right? And what we learned during COVID is the, the Zoom the Zoom meetings, you get the opportunity to do those virtual home visits and get in front of their families, you know, on more than one occasion. And, and our guys did a, a great job getting on the road and getting into the homes and not only recruiting and, and uh, meeting the student athletes, but their families as well. So we're excited about this group. And I heard, you know, as some of the coaches mentioned, we don't have a ton of depth. Uh, in our roster, we only carry around 90 guys, maybe a couple more in either direction. So these guys will come in and have an opportunity to compete and put some competition on the guys that we have returning. So we're excited about this crew for sure. And coach, like I said, recruiting is a never ending process. So this process will continue for you. You still have a couple opportunities and some openings. Uh, maybe I know we can't talk about individual players, but is there some position needs you're still looking to fill? Yeah, we'll be back on the road. You know, we're going to sign this group here in the early signing period and then enjoy the holidays and get some downtime, much deserved rest to spend with our own families. And then we'll be back on the road uh, in mid-January. And we are looking for a couple more positional guys, pr primarily from the high school level. You know, we're looking probably for another linebacker and uh, a another lineman or two. And coaches, as you guys get your break and then it's, you get right back into it this spring, talk a little bit about the spring. How many, how many opportunities do you get? Uh, maybe some some competition within camp that you're looking to see. That Coach Devine mentioned some guys on the offensive line going to get some new new opportunities, some new roles. So talk a little bit about what you guys are looking forward to in the spring and some of the competitions you may see in camp. Well, getting some much needed reps for some of the guys that maybe haven't been out there a ton, but look to be filling uh, you know some starting positions. Uh, you're only allowed 15 practices, so you know, uh, but you get good quality mental work with the meetings and so on, and you know. With any luck, we'll have somewhere between 65 and 70 guys for spring practice, which is about the number you usually have, you know. And th that's the opportunity where, you know, the depth chart, depth chart can move and change. And that's where the guys currently in the program have an opportunity to go in there and, and earn their playing time. And then when we add the freshmen in the summer, it's an opportunity for them to all come together as a team and the older guys helping the younger guys and so on before you get into preseason. But spring practice is where you can have the guys that, you know, maybe were scout team this past year or backups this past year year to go in there and compete for starting roles as well as the guys that you know finish the season as starters to secure and hold on to their spots yeah. and coach we talked about this right after the Delaware game clinched you guys another winning season but it also it sends you into the offseason on a positive note you guys uh, with a really good solid game you play well you have that to build off of what's the mindset of your group since that game back in November and as you look forward to the spring well, what I've witnessed, and, you know, we go on the road and the staff goes on the road, so our staff doesn't see, you know, what the current roster guys are doing from when our season ended to, you know, basically today, the last day of finals. But the enthusiasm and the leadership and the guys have been in the weight room probably more these last few weeks heading into finals that I've seen in some past years. Now, you know, obviously they would like to have still been playing games, so we would have been around them a lot more with practices and, yeah. you know, games through the early part of December. But uh, our guys are hungry, and uh, they've done a good job. They've been getting in there, uh, you know, voluntarily getting in there a lot of times, just taking study breaks and getting themselves in weight room. And I've seen guys out on the field, you know, when I wasn't on the road and in the office – during that uh, early part of December, I saw a lot of guys out there, you know, uh, running through drills and, and doing things on their own. So, you know, we're heading in the right direction when you got player led situations like that. And, Coach, it looks like these 11 young men that you're bringing in today are going to fit in that same mold of the group you've had. So, I want to wish you the best of luck as you guys head forward to the spring and then I'm obviously in the camp in August. I appreciate everyone joining us today for the Villanova Football Signing Day show. This is Steve Pannone, joined by head coach Mark Ferrante. Go, Cats. Thank you.